One of our first deliverables. So before jumping into um, uh, maybe the, the overview of this presentation is this meeting. And something that we're particularly interested in is understanding the role of large ensembles of models, what's out there, what kinds of horses are available for what kinds of courses, and what kinds of courses are out there, and so on. And to be able to bring folk together so that we can, A, identify some common issues, and B, start to have a look at where there are some, some really important gaps. And uh, I think one of the neat things are these focus groups that are happening tomorrow, and I think we've identified a number of things that would be useful uh, foci for uh, meetings that happen into the future. I just want to pick up on the point about scenarios and uh, so on, and that is that we have a, a, a focus group on uh, scenarios and pathways uh, coming up, so please feel free to uh, come along and, uh, and join in that. In terms of the non-stakeholder related work and getting into the nuts and bolts of some of the modeling we're doing, there are, there are some parallel themes. So something we were keen on trying to understand is the system-wide implications of different policies or the system-wide implications of different policy goals and what kinds of policies come out of that as a function of trying to uh, trying to meet those goals. So we needed a, a large ensemble of, uh, of models to have a look at that. We're also particularly interested in the role of technology. Technology for us is, is something that's, that's very interesting, and we'll go into that in, in a minute. And um, as I say, to do this and to understand the implications of what we're doing, as well as trying to get a large picture to narrow down to the specific actions that get us to outputs that we wanted to get to, we needed this, uh, this large ensemble of, of approaches. And not only do we need a large ensemble of models, and it was mentioned earlier on, and it's a little unfair that I get to go after a lot of questions because I can pretend like our team's got that all fixed up by, <laughs> by slipping in potential answers. But one of the things that was important was not just to take a model off the shelf, but to bring a bunch of expertise with that model. Uh, my old mentor always used to tell me that, that all models are wrong, some are useful. And uh, so to try and glean out some of the insights that we'd be able to get, we saw that as, as critical. To start off with, we're trying to think about the world and how it may evolve. And we heard earlier on today why it's important to look beyond just technology-rich uh, cost-optimizing models. So we have a large uh, macroeconomic computable general equilibrium model into which we program different states of the world. This is multi-regional, and so we can have a look at things like leakage from Europe to another place and all kinds of, of, of interesting things. To get a good grip on the technologies, though, we have one of the most detailed, um, one of the most detailed technology-rich uh, models available for, for Europe. Looks at every single country, covers all sectors that consume energy in a significant way with a large techno technology uh, ensemble. Now, um, I'm sorry to break it to the economists, but uh, the world doesn't act like a large economic model, and I'm sorry to break it to the technologists, but you know, rational people don't always cost optimize. So inside of this, we try and put in a, a behavioral model so that we can get a sense of how people and technology develop at the same time, because there are relationships that go beyond some of these uh, straightforward descriptions that we, that we often try and have. Now, there are some key considerations that the Commission has, and there are policy measures it wants to use to get there. And uh, we go through a few of these. So one that is key is energy security. So we have uh, a couple of teams working on, on energy security, looking at different things. Uh, we've heard earlier on that flexibility inside of the system is critical. So we've chosen a couple of case studies and teams that have a look at grid dispatching, moving between systems and so on, so we can, we can see how to increase potential uh, flexibility. Then we have other work that looks specifically at impacts on the environment and looking beyond just the energy sector. So, you know, it's great if we all use low carbon uh, generating technologies like solar panels and wind turbines and so on, but if they're manufactured in India, which has a lot of coal used to generate those, then we're importing those emissions with them. And so just to get some kind of handle on you know, um, broader life cycle, uh, life cycle impacts, but also we hear a lot about um, 
climate change and the nexus and uh, so on. And one of the things that always intrigues me is we have these scenarios looking into the future. We typically have some sort of baseline, there's no climate change, and then we do some mitigation scenarios or climate change scenarios on that. Well, you know, if we believe the science and we've overstepped our, uh, our climate budget for a two degree target, which we probably have, it means that there will be climate change. So we have some hydrological modeling going on inside of those uh, tools as well to understand you know, what some of those, uh, some of those uh, impacts uh, may, may be. And we have pollution uh, dispersion tools inside there as well to try and get a handle on, depending on the energy system we choose, what are gonna be the broader environmental impacts and if we can cost those, would we be choosing a different energy system? Now, this is an ensemble of a large number of issues that people have brought up over time, and they feature in the winter package, they feature in lots of different packages. But the idea to try and get a sort of big picture uh, view was, uh, was important and the goal. So having these models all together and saying we want to link them is all well and good. However, the first thing that we need to do is understand how we would link them and what sort of data is going to be transferred from what model uh, to what model. As I said, we needed to have experienced model users to understand what, this, uh, what the model is actually telling us. Some numbers coming out of a model, you know, we, we could very easily stick our heads in the sand and then say, okay, we're going to massage these a little bit so they can go into another model. We can run them a whole bunch of times, they converge, we get an answer. But that's not necessarily that helpful. So we had to come up with a schematic of what information was going from what model to what model, what information we wanted to have common, and on top of it, some of these models calculate stuff endogenously that are exogenous assumptions for other models, and some of these things we're just not going to link up. For example, the life cycle assessment tool gives us a lot of information about what's required to put these energy technologies together that we're going to use inside of the system. Depending on that choice, we should, in fact, be having a different economic system with a different manufacturing structure, which in turn should mean that we have a different amount of electricity being consumed by these different sectors. Now, it's, it's a wonderful academic exercise to try and pull all of this together. We thought that that was not going to be practical. So instead, to try and understand what's going in, what's coming out, what the major implications are, and where it makes sense, where we can do it in a way that we can understand what's going on, we would um, have some endogenization. I want to speak a little bit more about the, uh, the technologies. And I mentioned uh, behavior, but one of the, the, the partners in our group, and unfortunately not German, or for, I, I, um, <laughs> are looking at, at technology, but not just from the point of view of the cost benefits or the learning curve, but a number of different things. Is society ready to appropriate this? Are there institutions and other things in place so that if this technology is the answer, we can make some we can see whether or not it would, it would fit into the system, and so on and so on. So we have a number of different things, and this is clearly important. Many models, many models out there, you'll see carbon capture and storage rocking up time and again. We've often seen energy efficiency rocking up uh, often. A lot of things that, yes, technically, second law of thermodynamics and all the rest of it will work. In terms of whether or not we have the right kind of institutions in place or people familiar enough to be able to use and appropriate these or the business models around, maybe not. And to come back to the question about whether or not our modeling is giving um, useful information to policymakers, we would argue that this is really important. It's not good enough to say, yes, we can do CCS, when in actual fact, consumers may not be ready to have large pools of carbon dioxide stuck underneath the ground, and because it's far away enough, we don't, we don't have to worry about it. So a detailed look at technology and developing technology roadmaps where there's some interaction with stakeholders, hence the question to Jürgen earlier on about uh, sharing information. One thing that's particularly important is trying to understand the different types of futures that we may live in. And there are a number of ways of skinning this particular cat when we look at uh, scenarios, states of the world, sensitivity analysis, shocks to the system, and so on, and what we're going to do. Our approach at the moment, which we will talk about a little bit in the, the, the session tomorrow and is not completely finalized, is this idea about having the world potentially moving on into different states. Okay. Some of those states, we can have some sort of control over. So we want to have some dynamic interaction with the models. Some of those states we have no control over. 
So to use these states of the world, specifically the ones we have no control over, to help us try and define uh, a set of different narratives that could, uh, could exist, those narratives um, defined by specific numbers and projections and assumptions being made, made pretty clear. And then as we run our models and we look at different shocks, we can understand what we may or may not be able to uh, affect. Again, we're after insight. So there's no, while, while this project is very ambitious in terms of its scope, we've uh, tried to limit um, some of the insights we want to, to gain with uh, different case studies and deliberately located in different parts of of Europe. So co-evolution of technologies uh, in the UK, ecosystem services, Lithuania, carbon capture and storage generally in the EU, district heating um, in, 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 in Baltic region countries, and, and other things in, in different places where we know that these are issues and we'll be able to pull out hopefully some policy relevant insight, but at the same time some really useful model relevant insight. When we sat down and we, we got together after putting in the proposal to Patrick, and thank you for funding it, by the way, um, we realized that, that we'd bitten off a lot. Okay? So to try and get this whole thing working from beginning to end, uh, as we had originally envisaged it, did not seem to make sense. So we decided to take a step back and develop a little pilot uh, study. And we took something fairly contentious simply to get started so we could understand... Um, how our models may work or not work and where we need to, to uh, move, move data. And we looked at Europe in 2050 and what would happen if each country had to reduce its emissions by 80% individually or Europe could act as a complete union and it was Europe that reduced its emissions by 2050. And what would the dynamics be there? Because we expected to see a lot of these things uh, coming up. So... Uh, uh, we figured out a plan to do that, and essentially what we started to do is run a large number of these models with what we thought were the best assumptions to start off with, run these all in, in parallel, maybe some linkages here and there, just to understand what's going in, what's coming out, what's being calculated, and what the insights are that we could, uh, we could, we could, we could gain from this. And there were some that were interesting. Okay, so the obvious one, scenario one over here, this is Europe acting as a union, scenario two, not. We see that there are efficiencies to be gained. So there was less electricity that had to be generated because there were some places where you could be more energy efficient. So you shifted things around and overall the costs, the costs were lower. We could also point out that there were winners and losers. The red line is everybody goes to 80% reduction. Uh, if, if we move things around so we can play to the strengths and weaknesses of the, the system as we saw it evolving, you'd see some places like Cyprus, for example, having a much uh, bigger emissions reduction. Right now it's based on oil. It's in a very sunny place. You could do a lot of uh, uh, wind and solar and other things. Versus other countries that may, you know, might, might not be cost effective and so on. So those, those were pretty... Um, Trivial results, we thought it would be quite useful just to get a message out that there would be winners and losers in the, the energy union, which we thought would always be nice to get a bit of attention. But um, along the way, we discovered that there were some things that, would be, that, were, that were good to do and we could start to piece together sensibly. One of these was that we were running with the same scenarios, in, with the same uh, data in times, and the EcoSense uh, environmental module, we were finding that there was a relationship that could, where we could link these models relatively easily and get some sensible results. In fact, to the point where it may be that we could move beyond just a soft linking and getting interpretation to in fact doing a, a, a hard linking and being able to do our optimization where we can both reduce costs to um, the the energy system with the standard uh, capital operating, all of those sorts of costs, to include costs to health. So we could come up with the most cost-effective, environmentally friendly or health-friendly uh, uh, projection for Europe. And so uh, we found that it was uh, the, the, the team that was doing this, our German team who was doing this, found that uh, it was possible to, um, to, to gain insights, to get these results out, and to have potentially have a reduced form of this health impact model inside of uh, the Times model, and we could consistently think about how to develop a, um, an, a, an integrated system with some very real useful, useful outputs that we could understand. 
Uh, this is going on in parallel, and it's another thing that we're finding useful and most likely possible to, to pull in, is that with our life cycle assessments, you know, our low carbon scenarios, if we look at it from our point of use, European models look great, but if we include the embodied carbon in the system, not so great. But um, it's one thing just to say it, it's another thing to try and quantify it. So we're finding that there are some results that we can get out from that uh, that are useful. These results are from a separate study, by the way, but they, um, uh, the results for this are, are in practice, are in, in, uh, uh, they're happening right now. There are a bunch of key things that are coming out that will be put online. Some of them are similar, and maybe we can share some infrastructure with other teams, and we've been talking about this, that would free up budget for some of the other activities. But one are these policy briefs, reports, and technology roadmaps, and so on. Uh, another one is a, an online pathway diagnostic tool. All of these models produce a large number of indicators, which can mean different things to different people. So to be able to, to pull these together into aggregate indicators or sets of indicators that can be pulled out that people can look at, we thought would be very, very useful. We're developing an open engagement model, more about that in a second, and a learning uh, simulation. One thing that having done this uh, pilot experiment, we have found incredibly useful has been to develop our database and data management uh, infrastructure. It was very nice to hear Andreas talk about issues associated with copyright because uh, we try and um, characterize this data in terms of the type, in terms of a whole bunch of meta descriptions. And one of them is the copyright and whether or not we can share it so we can understand what can move through the system, but also built in as a detailed versioning control. And it's, uh, uh, it, it's, it's a semi-automatic thing. Our uh, very smart programmer who's working on this has set up some things where basically you put your data into well-defined Excel spreadsheets and they can be shipped into the database and dumped into a, another, another model relatively fast. But the advantage of doing this is we can also do versioning. And one of the things that's going to be very interesting is to understand as we start to link models, and there are iterations, as we have the versioning of the data, we can see where there may be changes in some of these, in some of these key variables as a result of the link. Okay? So again, it's not to say that linking everything together, getting it to run, getting it to converge, and there's your answer is a good thing, but rather to understand how and when we move these, pull these things to, uh, together, what it what what it is that changes and the insights that could be gained from those. And we think that's uh, particularly useful. This is all being made open source, by the way, so will be available um, at some point. But at, at the moment, because we are having to look at very specific inputs from one model, understand what that data means, transform it in various ways, and move it into another model, everything's very uh, tailored to uh, our particular set of, set of tools that we're looking at. There'll be an open engagement model. This will be based on the open source energy modeling system. This is an open source light version, if you like, of Times. The Cypriot government already uses this as their uh, national model. So there'll be 28 uh, EU models available for people to download and do experiments with, calibrated to the major parts of data that, that are here. So if anybody wants to go deeper than, just, than scrolling with uh, bars on websites, um, they, they, they certainly can do that. This is a modular tool, so you can put different things on top of it. And one of the things that we're thinking about doing is the lessons that we learn from linking to other tools, we're going to discover stuff. I mean, it's a research project. We don't know what's going to come out of this. But as we see that there are more interlinkages that are more or less important, and we can think about developing some of these reduced uh, form models just to include in here so people can play around with them and understand where those links are important. At the moment, most of us are choosing links based on intuition or because we can get papers published or because it fits with some sort of incentive uh, that we have. But we hope to, uh, to have something that comes out of this that um, um, we, where we discover some new relationships that are particularly important. My suspicion is, is in fact, climate change. A changing climate is going to drastically change our ideas of uh, baseline and future energy projections. Not going into the geeky space of playing with models uh, and so on, we want to be able to rapidly engage with people and um, get some of these concepts that we're pulling out be made available fast. Okay, so 
uh, one of our teams, one of our team members from the Faroe Islands, who is involved in developing games to teach professionals in the oil industry to become uh, professionals that understand what's happening in the job that they're having to, to do, which might be different from their training. Uh, is developing a game based on what it is that we're doing here so we can basically have a really nice crash course way of getting people to play around with different levers and things and see what that does to different parts of Europe over time. Now this is all going to be based on, on real data and heavy modeling, but uh, we, were, we were playing with this uh, first version of this yesterday, and in fact it's a lot of fun. And uh, you can do all kinds of crazy things, like you can speed up time a little bit, so you're under pressure to make decisions. So you just start making decisions. You do the first thing that comes into your mind. And this can come up with just a very interesting parallel for folk, perhaps in the commission, <laughs> perhaps elsewhere, where there are lots of things to do very fast, and you need to have some sort of systematic way of understanding the decision through to the, uh, through to the impact. Here is our, our team. I'm afraid we're fairly well spread out. Um, maybe a slight over-representation in, 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 in Viking parts of, 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 of the world, or at least that uh, upper part, but, but spread out. And of course, we'd be very, very ha happy to have your comments and thoughts. And maybe, uh, again, just an appeal to put ideas up on these uh, notepads and other things so that we can uh, systematically gather a whole lot more than that we might be able to do just in a question and answer session. So with that, thank you. Since I'm not financing the project uh, personally, so it's all of you. It's, it's the European taxpayer. So it's uh, thank the European taxpayer for, for supporting the, this project. Um, Sit down, maybe. Yeah. Um, so, uh, questions, comments? <laughs> Uh, thank you very much for that presentation. Uh, uh, I like games, so could you elaborate a little bit more? Uh, so can one fail in this game, and what kind of decisions is one taking? Is it technology decisions, policy decisions, or, you know... Or so, so the idea at the minute is, um, uh, as you saw we're, still, we're still early in the project, so we're going to see how things, how things wind up. At the minute, the idea is, is that these are policy decisions. You get to put money into a into things like um, heating subsidies for, um, for poor consumers and so on versus maybe sticking more wind turbines in different parts of, of Europe that, or, or at least meeting different renewable energy targets and, and so on. And then you, you run this through and you start to see based on a number of different criteria who's winning and who's losing. So, uh, you know, it doesn't make so clearly in, in the short term, these heating subsidies can be extremely important. If you set them too high, there might be mac macroeconomic damages that you want to have a look at. And uh, similarly, the higher renewable energy uh, penetrations may have some kind of effect on, on climate change, depending on what the rest of the world is doing, which may in fact change some of your investment strategies and so on. Idea being policy levers. And then from this large, these diagnostics that we have to choose uh, some performance characteristics and, 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 and see how you do. And the interesting element, which is a little different from the climate calculator, is that apart from just being slightly more policy focused as opposed to, you know, a, a nuclear one to four kind of, kind of thing, is also the, the, this, this time element, the idea that... Um, you, know, you have to make decisions at particular points in time to get somewhere. It's, it's, you know, at some point, you're going to have to start investing in carbon capture and storage, or the climate is going to change. And it's a very nice uh, dynamic uh, added, I think. Michel uh, Laubmann, uh, com uh, uh, European Commission. Thank you very much for the last point also of um, coming to this uh, game. Um, for me, for it, it's a question or a comment for the other projects. Um, what is important for us from the Commission is it's, uh, what that you have a look, what are the results of your project and how you're going to exploit them. We are not only wanting that uh, we get uh, a lot of uh, reports and, and nice uh, internet pages, uh, but we want also to see really that you see the whole picture of, uh, of the, the, the situation and where it will be used and by whom. And then to take the steps already during the project, benefit of the project lifetime, to see how to get to this future cust customers in, in, bra in brackets who can use or who, who should use these uh, uh, results in the future. Yes. 
I mean, just just one once this was quite a big deal for us when we were putting the the project together. So the idea of the game was so that we could engage everyone from students. We're all at a university, so to, for us this was great to be able to teach our students about energy policy in Europe and the consequence of different kinds of decisions. And so on the fact that this is used for, um, you know, industry professionals also meant that if we do it right, this could be helpful for uh, people who aspire to get into the commission or do do those sorts of things. But also um, the op this, this open uh, energy modeling system, as, as I mentioned already, this is being used by at least one EU member state as their, their national modeling system. And it is very difficult for universities to simply tomorrow go from, hey, I would like to be able to do some modeling with tr some transparent data and support my government, um, to actually being able to do it relatively fast. But if we give them basically a starter kit that's available with teaching material, good online data that is passes muster, they can do that together with access to some of these heavier tools uh, underneath it's a thing. So, so we, we certainly thought about, you know, we're doing things that are policy relevant, so they're the, they're the standard policy reports that, 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 that come out. And uh, things like the special issue of this journal, which we hope to get out regularly, so there's, a, there's uh, an, an increasing platform in this meeting for, for this modeling community. But at the same time, having something that helps move people quickly into understanding some of the dilemmas that policymakers feature, with enough draw for that to exist, and... Um, you know, university tools so energy modeling doesn't become uh, owned by a relatively small community of great people, but uh, there's access to a number of number of others with transparent data was 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 very very much in our mind as 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 a bit of an end goal. And of course, this engagement model would be available for uh, who, whoever wanted to use it. And as people get deeper into it, they'll see that some of these other tools are incredibly powerful and need to need to be used. <laughs> or can any of you also give a comment on this uh, question on how uh, who, who would be uh, your future the, the future users of uh, the developments of your project and and what steps can you take to uh, show the path ahead to their use? <laughs> yeah, um, I'm I'm totally agree with with uh, with Mark, and uh, it's for that that I just uh, we are very concern about the learning curve and about making the model uh, in different, let's say, levels of knowledge. And uh, as we have in the, in, the, in the partnership, in the team, different universities, what we pretend also related to the MOOC is to, to go for, let's say, different kind of stakeholders. And now we are working also in the, in the, in the project and just to have uh, different stakeholders, not only at the policy level, which we will are working on that at different administrative levels, but also in the academic level. And also we plan to, as I said, also when I present the, the project, make some sort of short documentation uh, addressed to non-specialists, just to make outreach about the urgent necessity of make that transition. So our just uh, scope is very wide, uh, but the, we we will focus on three tools, which are the MOOC, which are making the model learning curve uh, just uh, very easy, and also just to to make also uh, very different uh, outreach strategies to reach that uh, different stakeholders and 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 public. Yeah, I mean I can also continue in, within Setna. For example, we we try to to get the stakeholders on board from the beginning, and we started there with a series of workshops where we first look into certain topics that we look at in case studies, and we have these workshops in mainly in Brussels, but also elsewhere in Europe, uh, and then having this engagement at an early stage, you can take them also on board and get the feedback, incorporate that in your plans, and then adapt that, and use that to adapt where necessary. And I, mean, I think we did that also in, in previous activities, and there we, we made good experience with doing it that way. Just to add a few words for uh, the Reflex project, we have um, 
to focus our uh, attention on the policy issues and recommendations. For this uh, purpose, we have already uh, published uh, two um, policy briefs, and we are planning to do to publish more of these, uh, which are uh, short document uh, short documents that where we. Um, present some uh, important issues that we think are relevant for discussion with the policy makers. And um, we also have an external advisory board composed by stakeholders in the project that we dialogue with them on the project outcome. And um, But I would say it's more on, um, on policy makers and stakeholders, our, our um, communication more than to the uh, open public. Okay, so maybe um, as time has flown by, <laughs> um, I will just say a few words uh, to close the session. So, first of all, I would uh, like to thank very much uh, all the presenters, but then also I would like to say that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's quite clear that uh, all four projects uh, tackle. Um, quite related issues uh, in somewhat different ways, but there are a lot of uh, common uh, issues that seem to be uh, tackled. So on the one hand, I think uh, from a research point of view, we see this as a very positive thing that there are parallel approaches. Uh, I don't think uh, we believe that uh, one model will solve all the problems. Uh, so uh, I think it's good to have a diversity. But at the same time, I think it's clear that there are, are uh, very interesting options uh, for collaboration, converging, and so I hope that uh, in the further discussions we can further develop uh, what is possible to do within your projects and also for what happens next. <laughs> so, thank you again. Thanks to you.